be here today and good to be able to uh, look at the word that God has provided for us, and we're always thankful for that. Uh, I want to read the verses from Mark 1, 35 through 45, and then I want to mention some things from each verse, and then we'll look at some questions. And the reason I do questions is because it makes all of us think. If I ask a question, everybody that's listening, everybody that's listening kind of answers that in their mind, whether they answer it out loud or not. So it makes all of us think, and it helps us, in my opinion, to, to progress in our spiritual journey. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he, Jesus, got up and went out and made his way to a deserted place, and there he was praying. Simon and his companions searched for him, and when they found him, they said, everyone's looking for you. And Jesus said to them, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. This is why I have come. He went into all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Then a man with leprosy came to him and on his knees begged him, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Uh, and remember now, you couldn't, you couldn't get real close to a, a, a leper and you certainly couldn't touch them or you were considered unclean and couldn't, couldn't go into worship or be around people for a certain length of time. Jesus was moved with compassion. Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he told him, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Then he sternly warned him and sent him away at once, telling him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer what Moses commanded for you for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet he went out and began to proclaim it widely and to spread the news and the result that Jesus could, with the result that Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but he was out in the deserted places and they came to him from everywhere. For God did not, okay, I, I was about to read another verse. Uh, okay, uh, Jesus, and we'll talk about his mission and why he told the man this as we move through. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus' ministry was sort of a missionary uh, mentality, meaning he was trying to go around as many places as he could and spread the message. He demonstrated compassion. Compassion is more than pity. It's more than, than me feeling sorry for someone or pity for someone. Compassion means that I act upon that. So I, I'm hurt because I see someone in need, but instead of just uh, being sad about it, I try my best to go and do something about it. Uh, Je uh, Jesus represented genuine love. People flocked to him. And a lot of this was because they didn't see this in the religious leaders uh, of their day. So I want us to look at it verse by verse, and I'm going to mention a few things about each verse. In verse 35, uh, Jesus made time alone with God. He understood that he needed that time with God to, to help him to overcome the temptations that were there. Not just temptations to sin, but temptations to, to place the, uh, the focus on him so that he could get recognition rather than focusing on the mission that he uh, came to fulfill. Those around him searched for him in this situation. I would think the disciples were searching for him uh, because they needed, uh, they needed him to be there for the crowds that were there. The crowds searched for him to see what, a lot of them, to see what they could get from him. Uh, uh, Peter was the one that came. This is probably the first response uh, of him as leader, as leader of the disciples. Uh, the crowds were probably expecting more miracles, but Jesus' mission was to move on and do this, and that's why he said, let's go on. In other words, these crowds are here, but we got to go to different places that are going to accept us and what we are here for. In Jesus' day, the promised land was divided into three parts. The northern area was Galilee, the central region was Samaria. You remember that's a, that the, the Jews hated the Samaritans because they had intermixed interracial with the uh, people that were there. And the southern, southern region was Judea. Leprosy still affects some 200,000 people a year. We don't see it over here. 
we don't hear about it over here. Of course, leprosy it consists of many different types of skin diseases, but the worst can cause the ends, of, especially the ends of your extremities, your toes, your, your feet, your, your uh, hands, your fingers, to begin to almost just rot away. Uh, there are uh, many, many things they can do for it today that they couldn't do for it back then. And you were considered to be unclean and really unworthy to worship before God back then if you had leprosy. Uh, people uh, today are able to live normal lives in a lot of cases that have it. Uh, the man was desperate. He was not really allowed to come in contact with other people. But we read here that he was on his knees before Jesus because he felt like Jesus could heal him. And Jesus had compassion on him, reached out and even touched him and, and, and made him clean. There's two, two meanings here to being made clean. One is that his body was made clean physically. And the other one is spiritually he was made clean. Uh, Jesus... Jesus saw his faith, and he was healed physically, and he was healed spiritually. Uh, why didn't Jesus want him to go and tell anyone? Uh, Jesus had a mission here, and we'll look at that mission in a few moments. Uh, he did not want the popularity. He wanted the message to go out. It's difficult, I guess, for us to understand everything about this, uh, but... Uh, a lot of time, in a lot of these cases, people were just following him to get what they wanted. In uh, John six, uh, the Bible says that a lot of a lot of the uh, a lot of the followers that were following Jesus went away because they couldn't get what they wanted from him. And you remember Jesus asked the disciples, "Do y'all too want to go away?" And and Peter said, uh, "Why would we want to go away?" You're the Christ, the Son of the Living God. How, how else can we can we do that? So, uh, those are just some comments about uh, about the verses. Uh, any questions or comments about that? Anything that y'all want to mention? All right. How do our interest in life speak to who we are? How does our interest in life, how do the things that we do in life speak to who we really are? It, it, could, it could mean <clears throat> you're more lean, more toward the spiritual than the world or vice versa. Okay, and how would it have, what are some examples of that? And I, I see what you're saying. It can mean that we're leaning more towards spiritual things, towards God and eternity, or we're leaning more towards <clears throat> temporary things, the material things. What are, some, what are some examples of that? Anyone? How you spend your time. All right. How you spend your time, how you spend your money, uh, what you show interest in, what... what what wins out over other things, <laughs> you know, if you, if you, uh, I, I had a man to tell me one time years ago, he said, I always give my kids a choice. You, uh, you know, I, I don't mind them coming to church and I give them a choice. I said, y'all want to go to the lake with me or you want to go to church? <laughs> I said, and you're telling 10 year olds that 12 year olds that, you know what they're going to say. Oh, I give them a choice. And I, I'm thinking, yeah, you give them a choice, but you know, that's like saying, do you want to eat this ice cream or do you want to eat this piece of cardboard? You know, not saying church is cardboard, but to kids, it would be almost the same thing. Uh, so uh, what we do with our money, what we do with our time, what we do with our interest, what we focus on, do we focus totally on self or do we focus on family and friends and other people? So all of these things really show who we are. You know, we can, we can talk all the time about, you know, I, I trust God, I do this, I do that. But if your life, the style of living that you live, and I don't mean that, that, you, that you do things you're wrong, I'm just saying what you do with your life, the interest you have, what you do with all of the things that you do, 
uh, really, fo really lets, lets, should let you know uh, who you really are. So uh, those are things. So the focus, the focus of life really will, should let us know who we really are. Uh, what is our main focus? Is it on others? Is it on godly things? Is it on eternal things? Or is it on the temporary? Uh, and, and the Bible says uh, that our focus should be on the things that we can't see, the eternal things, not the things we can see, the temporary things, because the things that we can't see are eternal and the things that we can see are temporary. They'll fade away. They'll be gone. Okay? All right. In what ways did Jesus show his authority in, in these verses? In what way did he show his authority? What did he do for the leper? He healed him. Uh, he reached out and touched him, uh, which was pretty much forbidden back then. Uh, he said, I'm willing. He was willing to, to do for the leper what he wanted. Uh, what should that teach us about going in his authority? Do we have the authority to go places and do things uh, in, the name of, in the name of Jesus? We do, don't we? All right. Uh, in, in Matthew uh, uh, 28, 18, what we call the, the 18 through 20, what we call the Great Commission, uh, Jesus said that, that, that he has authority and we, we, we're given that authority to go in his name. And that's why we pray in his name. That's why we do things in his name and so forth. Uh, how did the focus of the disciples differ from the focus of Jesus? Um, what do you think? Uh, uh, let's just think of some, some situations where... Uh, where in, in the Bible, where are some situations in the Bible where that you can think of uh, where the disciples were focusing more on self than they were on, on God? Can you think of any? All right, they were fussing about who was the greatest, who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God when Jesus had shown them that, that servanthood was the most important thing. What else? Mm -hmm. I forget what they did. Maybe Is that bag at 416? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. So, so they, were, they were concerned about uh, just zapping these people away rather than, 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 than having their focus on them. Very good. That, that, I was just kidding about bag at 416. I think it's 418. <laughs> when Peter denied Jesus? When Peter denied Jesus? Uh, he had told him, you know, I, I don't, what he really said was, I'm better than all these. And even if they desert you, even if I have to die, I'm not, I'm not going to turn, turn against you. Anything else? And they were fishing, and a storm came up. They were worried about themselves, weren't they? Do you want? He said. They said. Do you want us to perish? You know. You need to get up and do something. We're about to drown out here. And also, when the children, you know, children came to him and 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 uh, they they wanted them done away. You know, go away. And Jesus said, uh, allow allow them to come uh, come to me. Uh, so in our lives, uh, we can. We can look at these things and we can cut up about these things, but if we're honest, a lot of times, I have to be honest, a lot of times in my life, in past years especially, uh, in some ways, I have uh, had my focus on the wrong things rather than having them on the right things. And, and just like we said with the question before, you know, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, to have our focus on things we can't see because they're eternal rather than on the things we can see because they're temporary. I think that's Phil 
3 8. Not Philippians, but Phil. <laughs> no, it's, tr it's true. Both of those things are very true. All right. Uh, why do you think there was confusion about the mission of Jesus? What was the mission of Jesus? Let me read a couple of passages. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So his main focus was bringing the good news of salvation, of eternal life to people. And in Luke 4, 18 and 19, it said, the Spirit, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me uh, to preach the gospel to the poor. That's poor in spirit. That's people that are uh, pretty much bankrupt of any spirituality. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, and there's plenty of brokenhearted around us today, and there were back then, to pro proclaim ca uh, liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, that's spiritually blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So why was there confusion, do you think, about the mission of Jesus? What did, what, what did the disciples want him to do? The king. Run the, run the Romans out. All right, be a king, their king, run the Romans out, destroy them, probably put them to death, <laughs> whatever they had to do to overthrow them. So their purpose was sort of a more of a military style mission that they wanted to come from Jesus rather than a spiritual type of, of, of mission. Uh, Jesus came pretty much in humility. Uh, his mission was the most important thing to him. That's why he was willing to be abused. That's why he was willing to be beaten. That's why he was willing to be uh, ridiculed. Why he was willing to go to the cross for us because that was the mission that he came for. And it was confusing to those around him because they couldn't see, uh, they, were, they were oppressed and they wanted some relief from that oppression. And they wanted somebody to, to be their king to overthrow the government that was there and the military that was there. Anything else about that? I'm assuming they, everybody thought that he would be an actual uh, king. Because must, but I'm assuming that's what the, the, the priest told him. Possibly so, because they were their their focus was even though they had heard it, they had read it, they had the Old Testament scriptures to reveal it to them. Uh, probably from from the uh, the priest on down, you're probably right. They wanted a a king that was going to establish a kingdom here at that time and overthrow everyone, and and possibly. Brother Larry, that's why the religious elite, the religious authorities did not see him for who he was because they were looking for something different. They didn't have any uh, spiritual insight. Right, they didn't have that spiritual insight, correct. Even though they had plenty of evidence for it, they overlooked it because it wasn't what they wanted. So when you... Some did. But not some did, yes. Did. Uh, but but many didn't. So the mission there of Jesus was to bring the good news and to actually have a spiritual type of kingdom rather than a military type of kingdom. And they didn't like that. They didn't want that. So there was al always confusion about the mission of Jesus. Why in our verses was everyone looking for Jesus? Why do you think the disciples we're looking for Jesus. He, they got up. He was gone. They went to look for him. Why do you think? I, I don't know that there's a wrong answer to this. So they, they said everybody's looking for you. They, okay. Well, yeah, we're looking for you. Everybody's looking for you. What do you think their concern was? What was the disciples' concern? Do you think? They got up and he was gone. Concern for his safety? Concern that <laughs> he had left them, you know? I mean, he was there with them, and all of a sudden he wasn't there with them for their safety. Uh, why do you think the crowds were upset that they couldn't find him? They wanted some more loaves of 
fishes. Wanting some more loaves and fishes and some more healing. Or, or ceasing more miracles. Uh, yes. So, so there was... Uh, uh, one, one commentary said the, uh, the disciples wanted you know, to find him because of the crowd of people. And they thought that the more people he tells his message to, the more... It would, it, it would uh, bring about his mission mm -hmm. in their mind what the right. mission was sooner. And we would probably think some of the same thing. You know, the more that you can get the message to, the better. Uh, why do you think m most in our country today are not looking for Jesus? <clears throat> why do you think most people today in this country are not looking for Jesus? All right, does Satan have power? Yes. Okay. Can we overthrow that power of Satan? Yes, it's arrogant self that does not belong to this world. <laughs> there you go. The Bible says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So if we, if we rely upon the Holy Spirit and we uh, submit ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit, then we can overcome the power of Satan. Satan is very powerful. He can overthrow us unless we allow the Holy Spirit to overthrow him and to give us the power and the strength that we need uh, in those situations. So uh, uh, most people, why, why, are, why are a lot of people, other, other reasons why a lot of people are not looking for Jesus? Do you think? Well, they they, they see uh, prosperity preachers in a, uh, uh, preaching wealth, you know, uh, and uh, you know, send me a send me a, a prayer cloth. seed, and you'll be blessed, and you'll get some money too. Or they see cults. <clears throat> okay, so they're being. They're being led the wrong direction, yeah, they, and so they're not seeking the real, the real Jesus that we they, know. They probably think that that's religion. I want nothing to do with it. Yeah, and that's true. Some of them, some of them see all of that and see him being taken advantage of, and they have enough problems already in wor in the world, and they don't want more problems in that situation. Plus, they see, uh, they see churches that are denominations that talk bad about other denominations and they say, well, you know, if they can't get along with themselves, I don't need to be there. They see individuals that talk about going to church, talk about the Lord, talk about praying and whatnot, and then they see the lives they live and they don't want anything uh, to do with it. Plus, I think also in this country, uh, to a large degree, uh, we are... Uh, we're satisfied, you know. We don't have now. Now, there's a lot of people that's got a lot of problems. Don't don't misunderstand me, but we don't have it near as bad as the as the the Jewish people had it back then, and we don't have it near as bad as a lot of people around the world today. Plus, in this country, we're so busy sometimes seeking ways that we can. Uh, live our lives, ways that we can satisfy ourselves, uh, ways that we can get ahead uh, materially that we don't, we don't take the time to really seek after Jesus. So there's a lot of reasons, I think, that, uh, that a lot of people in our country today don't really go looking for Jesus like these people did. So anything else? Underground church in China. They uh, four hour services mm -hmm. is desirable. Mm -hmm. You know they they want that. 
So the more comfortable we are sometimes and the more satisfied we are sometimes the less we look for Jesus. And sometimes I think we, like those back then, we feel like because we're blessed that we're doing right. You know, whether we're doing right or not, if we're receiving blessings, we feel like we are. We equate blessings with us doing right, and sometimes that's, that's, not, that's not true. Because sometimes those blessings come from, blessings can come from a lot of things. You know, you can be doing illegal things and be getting a lot of blessings, material blessings, but you, you're, not, you're not doing right. How did uh, Jesus going to be alone with God fit into his ministry? Why did he need to be alone with God? We find in many cases that he drew away to, to himself uh, to, be with, to be with God. Why did he need to do that? From eternity, he had never been separated from him that, that we know of. And, All right. And now he was, in a sense. So he needed what, do you think? Reassurance. Reassurance? He had, okay. He had, he was living in a human body and those uh, human emotions. He could have human de tendencies. Tendencies, yeah. Uh, he needed the power <laughs> that uh, he could get uh, in order to overcome the temptations uh, that were there around him. And he... A natural instinct, you want to be around there you go. Uh, Human and I think it helped him stay focused on his mission because it's easy, it's easy to get sidetracked and move away from the mission that you have, especially when those around you are not all moving towards that mission. And many times in our lives, going back to what we were saying a while ago, many times we feel like uh, we deserve certain things and we, uh, uh, we feel like that we see people that are, that are doing things that may be kind of on the edge of what we feel like is right and wrong, but they're doing the things and they're being blessed tremendously, it, it seems like. A lot of times it just seems like it. And, uh, and we, we have a tendency then to, to move away from it. How can meeting physical needs help open the door to meet spiritual needs? How can meeting physical needs open the door to meeting spiritual needs? If you help somebody with a physical need, more, most times they're going to be appreciative. And, and you, that's an open door. That's okay, so saying. if you help someone <laughs> with a physical need, uh, it's easier for them whether they are whether they listen to you out of obligation or, or true uh, thankfulness. A lot of times they're going to listen to you, and you can at least uh, begin the process of speaking to them about the Lord. Uh, and, and a lot of the missionary efforts in other countries that we do have to do with that. You know we. Uh, we, we dig whales for them. We, we uh, give them uh, physical, uh, uh, physical help from doctors, nurses, uh, med medications, and, and things. And just like the, uh, the uh, water tank that we sent money, I think we sent $2,000 down to Argentina, uh, they put those water tanks at churches. Mm -hmm so that people, when they come to get their water, they're at the church, and it's like the church and the Lord is helping to meet their needs, and it makes it easier, you know, to, to talk to them. Because some people, some people, quite honestly, just won't talk to you, you know? And some people, when you start talking about the Lord, uh, they, turn, they cut you off uh, immediately. So if they see, I think what we're saying is this, or what I'm saying. If people see that you genuinely care, then they're more likely to listen to you 
And especially if you tell them the reason I'm doing this is because God has blessed me and God loves me. And so I love uh, everybody else. And so I'm concerned about everybody else that I come in contact with. And when you tell people that, some people, yes, are going to just, they don't care anyhow. But a lot of people are going to listen more when they really think, really think uh, you care. I forget how the little saying goes. Some of y'all might uh, remember it. It, won't, it wants to come in my mind, but my mind won't get a hold, get a hold of it. But it's something to do with uh, people. People want, the, the gist of it is people are not going to listen to you if they feel like you don't care. Uh, but the more they feel like you care, the more they're going to really listen to you. It'll come to me in a week or so. And if, uh, I'll see it somewhere. And if you help somebody and they see that you don't want anything in return, right. that's added, added emphasis on the doctrine. Very and good. And if they have a, any knowledge Bible, that might, and they, but they're, even if they're not interested, but they have a knowledge of it, they're going to say, maybe, well, this is what religion is. Mm-hmm. That goes back to they see some, that the something else that come to my mind. It came in my mind this time. It didn't just go around. If you, if, if you, if you, if you help people because they help you, that's human. If you uh, do bad to people after they've done good to you, that's demonic. If you help people that have been bad to you, that's godly. You see what I'm saying? So, so uh, we need to help people regardless of this. Kat and I was at... Uh, getting groceries yesterday at Walmart and Perry and uh, a la I had on a Georgia shirt and a lady came over there and said I'm gonna come over here and talk to you even though you got that shirt on and I said I said so you're a Georgia fan no I ain't no Georgia fan I'm an Alabama fan <laughs> so we talked you know some and when we were leaving I hugged her and I said uh, regardless of the whose fans we are God loves us, and we're supposed to love everybody. And she said, "Amen." So I hugged her, and we left. But, but you know, you, you, if you, I did tell her this though. When she told me she was an Alabama fan, I told her I'd pray for her. <laughs> she said, "We don't need no prayers from y'all. We want to play y'all." That's what she said. We want to play y'all. <laughs> I said, "Well, listen, we. It was time for us to win one, anyhow." She said, "Well, we let y'all do that, but we ain't gonna let you anymore." <laughs> But anyhow, you can, that was a situation where, where we, we led into godly things, although we were talking about the other things. Uh, I thought she was coming around to make sure we paid for everything because they have people watching that, you know, but usually they're not in Walmart clothes because we got caught in that situation one time before the girl forgot to ring something up because we were talking about church. <laughs> but we had told her before we... Before we started, we told her, now we got some water down below, you know, let's don't forget it. And she said, okay, well, we I was asking her where she went to church and all that and about the Lord. And she rung us up and we moved that far and a man stepped right in front of him. And he got on to her. I said, hey, wait a minute now. I was talking to her about church and she was. he said, she can't get distracted from anything when she's doing the job. So... I think she got in trouble from us talking about the church. So, well, but in anyway. probably that she let she let that slip. She did. Her mind. Oh, it was because we but we had both talked about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we told her we got a case of water down down there. Okay, uh, why do you suppose the cleansed leper failed to obey Jesus? <clears throat> Jesus told him not not to tell people. He went out telling people. Why do you think he did that? Okay, he was overjoyed. Probably couldn't understand it. He was overjoyed, and he had to tell somebody. You know, when we when we have something super good happen, we can't help it. We have to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. We even have pictures of it on our phone today, don't we? And it, a lot of times, it's not anything to do with the Lord. It's just to do with other things. 
Do you know your purpose, your mission while here on earth? Uh, I think it's the same as Jesus' was. You know, we may do it in different ways, but our purpose and our mission on earth should be the same thing as his. And I've always said that I don't, uh, and this is a human thing for me, I don't always understand why God leaves us here on earth if we're not helping to complete the mission that he's placed us here for. But then I don't understand totally because I'm human. And I, know, and I do know, as we say a lot of times, when maybe when we go through a, a something that could have taken our lives, a lot of times we'll say, God's not through with you yet. There's something he's got for you to do. So we have to remember that. Are you moved with compassion when you see the needs around you? And remember, compassion means that we actually, uh, we actually act upon our feelings. You know, it's easy to, it's easy to see situations and even pray for situations but then not actually do anything to help the situations. So uh, we have to remember all those things. Anything else we need to mention? Anything? Uh, I was thinking about when Jesus went out to pray early in the morning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I don't know anything in the Bible that says it, but surely there was converse between the two. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that. Either. Right. But we know when he went out yeah. to pray, it yeah. was it was that, yeah. for sure. And we, if someone, not always, but in some cases, if someone watched us and we didn't know they were watching us and we went out to be alone with the Lord, if we didn't say anything out loud, mm -hmm. they might wonder if we really have any mm -hmm. communication. Now, sometimes we speak out loud even by ourselves and speak out, especially in, in distressful situations. You know, we cry out even sometimes to the Lord, as we find in the Psalms over and over and over where they cried out to the Lord. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, he was, he, we, don't, we don't know what type of uh, communication they had, but it was probably it would have to be too cold. verbal it would have been. in some ways. Comfort or reassurance or something without the communication. It should be impossible almost. Right. <clears throat> All right. Good to have each one of you here. Good to have Deborah here with us again, and we praise God for that. And uh, uh, David is downstairs, so uh, fixing up some physical food while we're upstairs giving out spiritual food. But he'll get it, he gets it. So he's helping out. Okay? Father, we thank you for your blessings, your love, your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness. And we thank you, Father, that we know that we can communicate with you. And if we uh, are listening while we're praying, listening while we are uh, just sitting, meditating, uh, we know that we'll hear from you in different ways. And we'll hear from you from the situations, circumstances of life. And and from people around us. I pray, Father, that we might know the difference between the communication we might get from Satan and the communication we might get from you through other people especially. And I pray, Father, that you just be with each of us, be with our families, be with all of those that are sick and hurting and those that have lost loved ones. And we pray, Lord, that you continue our study in Mark, that we might gain the things, Lord, that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.